This is another one of my Catlin Elm rooted cuttings. Probably was in a four inch pot, upgraded to that slightly more than four inch pot probably last year. And I have been struggling to keep it watered ever since. The roots have gone crazy and this plant just just screams out to me to do something. The question is what? I'm not sure where I want to go with the design. I've had several ideas go in and out of my head. So what I'm going to do is eliminate the stuff that I know I don't need that will not be part of the design or part of some kind of thickening program. And I warn all my students, when you work on a tree, especially if I'm with you, do not become attached to it. Do not be in love with all the green foliage and all the branches because they're not going to be there when we're finished with it. So, I have a branch here that split. I don't remember seeing that happen. So, I don't need that at the top of the tree. This is interesting. I don't think I need this entire section. All right, so I'm working my way up the tree, and this is where the tree splits and then splits again. So as I'm working my way up to what will be the apex of the tree, I have to make some decisions about who stays and where. So part of me wants to remove this completely. Part of me thinks I might be able to turn it into a branch up on the top of the tree. Not really sure. Not really sure I need it. Not really sure it's going to do what I want. I'm also tempted to make the tree that tall and work with this as a continuation of the trunk line. I'm also tempted to remove this if this is going to be the front of the tree. And I think it is the front of the tree. Not only does it incline one way, but so far the scars are on that side and I'd like to like to keep it that way. Whenever I'm pruning I try and keep the scars to the rear of the tree. So do I bring this up? I make one of those crazy S shapes or do I go for something a little more conventional? I think I'm going to eliminate that one. I'm still going to try and save that branch, although the one right above it might be a better choice. And then I've got some confusion up here. I think I'm going to shorten all of it. And then maybe I'll keep it. Maybe I'll prune more. Maybe I'll wire it into position. I don't know. But what I want to do now is I want to look at the roots to help me determine where I'm going to go with the rest of the tree. So, your roots going around in circles. And something else that you can do, I don't usually, is you can run the tree a little bit on the dry side before you go in for a styling that's supposed to make the branches a little more supple than if it is 
full of water. It's kind of like the idea of a carrot that's been in your vegetable drawer too long and is limp versus one that is fresh out of the supermarket and is full of moisture and snaps easily. I'm wishing I'd stayed on top of this earlier and hadn't let it get so tangled up in its own roots. That's one of those things. I was saving it, saving it, saving it, saving it, waiting for inspiration. And my students have been bugging me. Telling me I need to start selling my stuff. And I guess I will at some point. Okay. So I have this funky root that comes up, goes back underneath. comes around. Sheesh, my goodness. So, what to do? Got a nice big root here, a nice big root there, even though he does kind of want to sneak up like he's a knee on a Louisiana bald cypress. So, what do I do? Sheesh. I'm at a loss. Well, when in doubt, wire it up. I know, usually it's when in doubt, cut it out. But we're gonna moisten the roots with some Super Thrive. So it buys me a couple minutes to work on the tree. You could also take this old artifact, this rare substance called newspaper, and you could wrap it in moistened newspaper, and that will also buy you lots of time to work on the tree. So, question is, what gauge of wire? Am I bending that? I know I'm bending that. Am I bending that? I don't know. So, which one do I go with? The thinner one, because I'm not going to bend the bottom, or the thicker one, because I might want to bend the bottom. Remember, measure the length, plus a little bit to account for the fact that you're working in three dimensions. I'm going to twist the tree counterclockwise, so I'm going to insert the wire. Insert, it's kind of silly here, but get the wire there and then spiral my way up the tree, weaving in and around branches so as not to trap twigs and foliage. Now that branch is right where I don't need it, so I'll go above it and pray I don't need to bend the trunk at that level. Come up, work my way around. So we'll go under this one. Work our way up top of the tree. I want to get up here. I want to go on the thicker branch or the thicker part of the trunk. Could also transition and change to a smaller thinner diameter wire or gauge if you were using copper. This is anodized aluminum so 
I don't need to worry about that. So where is the tree? I do not know. See, these roots have changed my mind. Originally, I wanted to do it that way, but the roots aren't speaking to me that way. So we're going to go with this is the front. This is going to end up becoming a back branch. I don't know what's going to happen to that. Now, right there is where I'm most likely to snap the tree. Could still end it right here. And I may do that next year. Who knows? But in the meantime, see, there's the split I was worried about right there. So that might, uh, that might answer my question for me. She may be getting shorter today. Or it might heal, and no one will ever know except you and me. And whoever else you tell to watch the video. I tell you, you learn more from my screw-ups than you do from my successes. So now... I need to figure out what to do with that giant root. I like it, kind of, but I don't need the whole thing, so I'll eliminate that. Don't need all of that. Got a fair amount of fine feeder roots close to the trunk. Eliminate some of the longer, lankier pieces. That better be my oil delivery, making all that noise. I'm going to guess it's not. So, we're going to call this a pre-pre-bonsai, and I think I'm going to go in this, what is this, an 8 inch, 8 inch mum pot. I don't know if they were designed for mums or if they just called that because that's what everyone uses when they pot up their garden hardies. I'll also be doing a series of videos on chrysanthemum culture this year. Probably not the bonsai culture because I have a DVD that I produced several years ago that is available for anyone who wants to get into chrysanthemum bonsai. But I also do the exhibition varieties, the big giant ones, and I hybridize and collect seed. So we'll see what comes out this year. Last year was just an unbearable year. Too much death. Too many people around me died. That will get me through a couple months. Come back to it. See what I can get out of it. All I did today was establish the line of the tree with an eye towards potential 
branches and strategic pot spots, but the thing that's bothering me is where I split the tree. So we'll see what happens. If I lose the whole top of the tree, then that makes the decision for me, and I'll just we work the bottom of the tree. So screw up number 987. I hope you learned from it. And make sure you tell your friends if they're into bonsai that it's okay to make mistakes. And the important thing is to learn from them. So this is the spot where I'm supposed to tell you to go out Hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, tell your friends, tell your family, comments, questions, whatever floats your boat, you go do it. And in the meantime, go work on your trees.